I'm AJ Bianco from Podcast PD, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows in the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 239 of the House of EdTech podcast, it's the highly outrageous, highly contagious 2023 edition of the House of EdTech Smackdown. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of EdTech. My name is Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech launched in 2014, giving me the opportunity to speak with teachers, leaders, and creators so you can more effectively integrate technology, strengthen your pedagogy, and have more confidence in your classroom and school so you can make an impact. Get involved with the podcast by visiting my website, chrisnessy.com. Using technology isn't difficult, and this is where it begins. This is the House of EdTech. And here we are again. This is always a fantastic time of year. We're approaching the end of 2023 very rapidly. And if you're listening to this on the day that it's released, there's no more time left in the year here in 2023 because I'm, I'm sure many of you are just going to be listening to this here at the start of 2024. But this is very exciting because we are coming up on some big big milestones here on the podcast. I've got a jam-packed episode today, but as I always do the last episode of the calendar year, I always find myself being a little bit reflective. And the the 10th birthday of the podcast is coming up on January 5th. If you're new to the program, and first, thank you for making this podcast a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. I launched this podcast on January 5th, 2014, and we're coming up on the 10th birthday of the podcast. That's super exciting. So exciting that I'll even throw in one of these. And (laughs) if you're listening to this as the podcast, I'm also, as I'm recording this, I'm doing it live on Twitter. So there is that, ooh, don't mess up element to the show. So. I'm going to, I'm not going to edit. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there as, uh, as natural as as it can possibly be. So that's a win for everybody, I think. (laughs) Um, but as I come up on the 10th birthday, uh, and I'm going to put something out specifically on January 5th, it's going to be a little bit of a bonus episode, but to think I'm, I'm here 10 years later and, and how not only has the podcast changed, but how my life has changed in the last 10 years. And I, I'm just like, like becoming teacher of the year. I'm beside myself on the, the accomplishment of 10 years as a podcaster. Uh, this is 239 episodes of this show. The next episode will be 240. So these milestones and the longevity of the show, I think it speaks for itself. but. I'll, I'll wax and wax. <laughs> I will wax more poetically about that in a little bonus episode that I'm going to release on January 5th, 2024 for the official 10th birthday. But that's, that, that's not the only 10th thing that I'm doing. This very episode itself, this is the 10th annual House of EdTech Smackdown. All right. Uh, I, I can't stress this enough. Uh, if you want to check out everything that's ever been done on the House of EdTech Smackdown, go to chrisnessy.com slash all time Smackdown. And Derek Larson, while he doesn't make an appearance in this episode, he maintains the spreadsheet for me of all the things that are mentioned from year to year in the different episodes. But if you do go to my website, if you go to chrisnessy.com, uh, there is a button on top. It says episodes, and there's a little bit of a drop down, and you can see the other SmackDown episodes and the show notes, and you can listen. And, you know, that we're going as far back as episode... Th- these are the SmackDown episodes. 26, 51, 76, 99, 124, 147, 170, 192, 215, 
and now here in episode 239. So exciting times abound. <laughs> All right, uh, enough about this. Let's get into the SmackDown, and then I will give you a couple of predictions for 2024. So we're going to hit the music, and we're going to get right into our first SmackDown entry. All right, the first SmackDown entry, we're going to turn it over to Miss Stephanie Howell. Are you exhausted from the constant clicking to get to each individual student's work, where you have to repeat yourself over and over and over again and constantly having to remember that answer key? Well, Cami has a solution for you. You're able to take a Cami assignment in your learning management system. And once you add it through that process, your students will begin working. You'll be able to click on class view where you can see your students working live, where you're able to provide them direct immediate feedback on their assignment as they're working in real time. I can go in and I'm able to click on my students work and leave an audio comment or a video comment or a graphic organizer if they need that scaffold in order to be successful on that assignment. So again, I love using Cami and that class view. And this EdTech Smackdown has been shared by Stephanie Hell at Mrs. Hell 24. Stephanie, thank you so much for your entry. Make sure you're following Stephanie Howell on Twitter and social media. She's doing great things in education. She's one of the best EdTech coaches around, and she is a, a mainstay here on the House of EdTech Smackdown for sure. All right, next up. And enough to, you know, I was, you know, go check out Cami as well. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Mr. G, Carlos Garza. Take it away, Carlos. What do you got for us this year? Hello, this is Mr. G, teacher, trainer, innovator. Check out my blog, edugoogdroid.com. And my edtech entry is the cell phone. When I am not prepared for a lesson, I tell my students that if they're going to be on their cell phones, they need to be fact checking me for everything that I say. And therefore, they will be in charge of their education. We will have discussions as needed. Carlos, that's a great entry because one, the recent episode of the show, actually the last two, I kind of really went into cell phones in classrooms as a topic. And that's, that was especially important in episode 238, which was originally content for Tim Cavey on Teachers on Fire with uh, Matt Rhodes, where we had a debate, and I am very much a fan and a supporter of cell phones in classrooms. Also wanted to point out, uh, going back to Stephanie Howell, uh, she was also a guest, my featured guest on episode 134 of the podcast, which was all about becoming a Google certified innovator. And Stephanie shared some insights into that as well. And this is not the first time you will hear from Carlos in this episode. But now we're going to go to Katrina Haynes. Take it away, Katrina. What do you got for us? Hi, Chris. This is Katrina Haynes. I'm a virtual school teacher in South Carolina. I used to teach in brick and mortar, but I am happily teaching uh, in virtual land for the last five years. My favorite resource is hands down Nearpod. And I do have a paid version of Nearpod and Thankfully, my school also has an account, but it wasn't always that way. I have paid for Nearpod out of my own account because it really lets me um, use equitable questioning and student choice for showing mastery with all the different activities in Nearpod. It's really the only way I can see every student's answer at the same time and adjust my instruction uh, literally in seconds. Thank you, Katrina. I really appreciate that. And thank you for your submission. And of course, Nearpod is a wonderful tool that everybody should check out. All right. Next up, we've got, and I, he was probably walking when he did this. Uh, let's turn it over to Brian Carpenter, the host of the awesome podcast, Fresh Air at Five. What do you got, Brian? Hey, Chris and House of Ed Tech. This is Brian Carpenter of Fresh Air at Five here, out walking as I do 
and I'm bringing you my EdTech Smackdown recommendation for 2023. All right, so there's a lot of technology changes going on, a lot of things happening. We got artificial intelligence all over the place. And uh, one of the tools that has incorporated the artificial intelligence into its tool suite is Adobe Express. As you've heard in the past and looking on Derek Larson's spreadsheet over the years, I've talked about Adobe Express. I've talked about all the different things that it can do before it went when it was called Spark and prior to that for posts and graphics and all those kinds of things. But what's really cool right now to me about Adobe Express is the fact that they've got AI incorporated in it for image background removal. Right there in the tool for free, I can take the background out of an image. So I have the foreground. I can do things like color splash. I can do things like, oh, I don't know, put an outline around it very simply by removing the background. Other things about the AI that's in there is text to image. And uh, I was working with my middle school students as we are digging into learning about AI in uh, our world and our classroom. And um, I, I got them into Adobe Express and I said, let's write a prompt for you to make a picture using the Firefly engine that's built into Adobe Express. And they did. I had them put the prompt on the graphic, I had them put their name on it, and I even had them put a sticker giving reference to how and where they use that prompt to make their image. I think it's important that we reference these things. I think it's important that we give credit to where it comes from. There's also the text effects that you can use that kind of makes, I don't know, weird shaped letters that have vines crawling all over them and things like that. But there's AI built into Adobe Express. You know, I was, uh, Tending towards Canva for a little bit. Uh, Canva's got a lot of great AI stuff as well, but I'm gonna stick with Adobe Express. A big fan, been that way for a while, and that is my EdTech Smackdown recommendation for 2023. Go check out the AI stuff in Adobe Express and all the other wonderful things that Adobe Express can do. Still a big fan. Thanks, Chris. Merry Christmas to you all. Okay, bye. Thank you, Brian, appreciate that. And yes, he was most definitely walking when he did that. And uh, recommending Adobe Express is certainly a great recommendation. He also snuck in a little bit of Canva in there as well, which obviously you can't go wrong with either. And I'd like the, uh, the big part of his message is not only you've got a tool, but you've got a tool that's also going to expose students to artificial intelligence and get them to be able to start to integrate that into the things that they're doing, which as I've talked about here, a lot in 2023 is important for students to do. We've got to get AI in the hands of students. Now, I'm going to put Stacy Fleming in your hands with her submission. Take it away, Stacy. Hi, Chris. My name is Stacy Fleming, and I am a high school math teacher in the at the American School of Doha in Doha, Qatar. And I have been flipping my classroom for about 10 years now. Um, I realized this was submitted a few years back, but I am loving Edpuzzle this year. Um, you can record your videos directly in the website. You can obviously customize your questions, add any questions you'd like. You can use other people's videos, um, and you can provide feedback to students' responses now. So really love that it's all free and it has been saving my life this year. Thanks so much. Stacy. thank you. And it's uh, one, it, it's always super cool to not only get voicemails, but to get voicemails and messages and contributions from people other places in the world besides, you know, New Jersey or Canada or other places in the United States. So, Stacy, thank you for listening to the podcast and thank you for contributing to the SmackDown here in 2023. All right, back to Carlos Garza. Hey, Mr. G here. And I have another one that you can use with your student's cell phone. It sounds like Curiosity. CuriPod is similar to Pear Deck, except with CuriPod, you can generate a whole lesson using artificial intelligence. The other thing that it can do is if you already have a presentation prepared, then with artificial intelligence, it will curify your presentation and add the interactive features to your presentation. 
But the one thing that I like the most is when I ask an open-ended question as part of their uh, interactive part of the presentation, is that it can give individual feedback to each student. And this can come in one of two ways. It can be either spelling and grammar, or it can be comprehension, which in my case, uh, it's usually comprehension, theory pot. Carlos, great, great recommendation there. Uh, and I know that somewhere, Christy Cloud is very excited to hear people talking about CuriePod because she is also very excited. And Carlos, if you're not connected with Christy already, make sure you connect with Christy. She's a CuriePod super fan. All right. Uh, and thank you, Carlos, for submitting CuriePod. Again, there's a little bit of a theme here. We've, we've got a lot of AI going on in education. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> All right. Actually, I'm going to go right back to Carlos with uh, his his third message. And Carlos, what do you want to finish it up with here? Hey, Mr. G here. And I have another one. This one is called Mastodon. And it's more of a concept than a tool. Mastodon is a decentralized social media network. And you probably already know a, of a popular one. And there's other popular ones. But the one that I'm focusing here on is Threads. Uh, this is the one by Instagram. So Mastodon is decentralized social media that anybody can create their own social media net. I created mine a while ago, but I decided to not continue it. So I joined another one that was more established, which was Mastodon.education. But anybody can create their own decentralized social media network. And the amazing thing about it is that it can connect with other social media networks. So even if I'm on Mastodon, I can, excuse me, if I'm on uh, Mastodon Education, I can be connected to others that are using the similar Mastodon concept. Eventually, Threads will be one of those. That is right, Carlos. Uh, and certainly mentioning Mastodon is important because as, as I did earlier this year, I did a whole episode on, is it time to break up with Twitter or X, right? And that was episode 234 of the podcast. I am also on Mastodon. Uh, mine is techhub.social slash at Mr. Nessie. All right. So really at this point, I am claiming all the different places. I am planting my flag with, you know, my username. I am on threads. The problem is here with threads, I'll go on a little bit of a tangent here, is I can't be at Mr. Nessie on threads because I don't have at Mr. Nessie on Instagram. I am at House of Ed Tech and my personal Instagram, I don't want to turn that threads into education stuff. So I have other personal interests outside of education and, uh, I don't want to mix it that way. So I, you can also find me on threads at House of Ed Tech. And again, I'm on Mastodon. I didn't build my own network, but I am uh, techhub.social slash at Mr. Nessie on a Mastodon server. So actually, let me throw this out here to you who's listening. What alternative social media platforms are you on for educational purposes? Obviously, Carlos mentioned Threads. I'm also on Threads. Mastodon, there's Blue Sky. So what are some of the things that you are on? Leave a comment. Let me know. Although, again, it is interesting talking about the alternative social media platforms, and I'm live streaming the recording of this very episode to Twitter. <laughs> All right, back to the SmackDown, and we're going to go into an email. And this comes to my friend from down under, Mr. Cam Ross, and he sent the following email. And Cam, I'll be nice. I will not impersonate you, although I always threaten to impersonate people who choose to email me, but I digress. All right, Cam emails the following. Hey, Chris, my nominations for this year's SmackDown are Diffit and Canva Magic, both tools I have enjoyed using to not only prepare engaging lessons, but with Canva allows my students the opportunity to be creative when designing a range of concepts for our game development class. Take care. And happy holidays, Cam Ross. Cam, 
you brought the thunder from down under. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist. I could not resist. So first, he comes at us with Diffit. I've talked about Diffit.me before on the podcast. If you're not checking it out, you've got to go and play with Diffit. And if you've never heard of it, is this your first episode of the podcast? I don't know. And of course, Canva Magic, all of the AI tools built into Canva. Super, super valuable. And again, Canva is going to be one of those ways that through Canva Magic, you can get AI into the hands of your students. So while ChatGPT or Claude or Bard may not be accessible by your students in school, I don't know of any school that's blocking Canva. So maybe that's a way we can get them at least doing some things with art. And I believe you can do text with Canva Magic as well. I'm actually pretty sure on that. And of course, Diffit is changing the game with allowing people to create differentiated resources using the power of AI by adding video, adding uh, PDF files, links from websites to generate resources that can be super easily shared via Google Docs, Google Classroom, Google Slides, the whole thing. Super, super valuable. And thank you to Cam for his email. We're going to go back to the voicemails and we're going to go to my friend Leo from Brazil. Big fan of the House of Ed Tech. And of course, uh, he's also a big fan of the Zebra Morning Show that I do at my school. So Leo from Brazil, take it away. Hello, Chris. Hello to all listeners of the House of Ed Tech. This is Leo from Brazil. The tool of the year for technology in education for me, without a doubt, is ChatGPT. I am a high school teacher and I use ChatGPT daily in my everyday tasks. And I think the most important tip I can leave to contribute to the House of EdSec 2023's Smackdown is that to get the best results from ChatGPT wherever you're used for it, you need to debate with it about its results. I question each response, discuss, give examples of what I need to it, and this is where the magic happens. It's not enough to just write the perfect prompt. ChatGPT is a brilliant student, full of potential, but it still doesn't know how to explore it. We need to be the mentors of ChatGPT so that it really delivers the goal to us. Leo, I love it. ChatGPT straight up, hands down. If you're not using, and I'm talking to you, listener, <laughs> if you're not using AI in some way, shape, or form each and every day, then you are spending time, you're almost wasting time if you haven't yet found ways to use AI in your everyday practice. I have a sticker on my laptop, I believe I got it from Matt Miller, that AI is my new teaching assistant. AI is your new teaching assistant. I did an episode about AI being your new teaching assistant. You know, if I, if I go back here into the catalog, yes, I did an episode, 233, back in September to start this new school year that we're in, that AI is your new teaching assistant. So if you haven't checked out that episode, go back and check it out. And of course, I want to thank Leo from Brazil. Uh, he's a new awesome supporter of the show uh, as of last episode. So of course, I thank Leo for his support of the podcast and believing in what I'm doing here with the show. And again, he takes time out of his day every morning to watch the morning show that I do with uh, my high school students. So thank you to Leo. All right, next up, we're going to go back to voicemails once again, and this comes to us from Chris Stuchko. He's the host of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. Take it away, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Stuchko, a special education teacher in Pennsylvania, and I'm the host of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. You can find it at ninthgradeexperience.com. I'm a proud member of the Education Podcast Network hosted by the man here, Chris Nessie, and I'm excited to be back this year to share a fun tip with everybody for the House of Ed Tech Smackdown. Now, it's been the year of AI, I understand that, but uh, my suggestion isn't necessarily for educational purposes. My suggestion is to go to magicschool.ai, and there's tons of really cool stuff on there, but if you scroll down and look for the song generator, and you can input all sorts of cool information into it, it is definitely something fun that you can do with your colleagues, something fun you can do with your students, 
And I may have a song in front of me here, and I'm not going to sing it because I'm not the greatest singer. But what you can do is you can put in song topics and details and the artist name and the song title and the way that you want the song presented. So I may have the opening verse to a song here about Mr. Nessie here that I put into magicschool.ai with the tune of Welcome to the Jungle. And I'm going to read it and it will be up to him if he leaves this in or not. But here's the beginning first of the song. Welcome to the podcast, We've Got Fun and Games, where Chris Nessie shares his knowledge and aims. He's the host of House of EdTech and Podcast PD, bringing education discussions for all to see. Now, you can make your own song. It's pretty cool. But magicschool.ai has lots of great real features for, for teachers, but I think this one's really fun too. So Chris, thanks a lot for doing what you do for education and podcast. And again, that was magicsquat.ai, song generator. And I am Chris Stuchko from the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. Chris, that was super cool, which, which is what makes this more fun is I didn't listen to any of these in advance. So that way I could give genuine reactions and thoughts on what people shared. So I knew Chris had sent in this message, but this was the first time I listened to it. So I had no idea that was coming. And now I almost want to take that and you know, go get the karaoke version and maybe I can build out the rest of the song and who knows, maybe I'll have a new theme song on the podcast in 2024, courtesy of Chris Stuchko and uh, his welcome to the podcast theme song. Very cool, Chris. Very, very cool. <laughs> um, real quick, I just want to also point out that everything that has been mentioned here, you can always find in the show notes for this episode which are going to be chrisnessy.com slash 239. And hopefully sooner rather than later, Derek Larson will update the all-time SmackDown spreadsheet. And that can always be found at chrisnessy.com slash all-time SmackDown. And we have reached our penultimate submission. We're going to go to friend of the podcast, friend of podcast PD, the incomparable Mel A., Take it away, Mel. So number one was quizzes for me. 100% kids really love it, whether it's live, whether it's homework, whether it's mastery peak. There's just so many different options for the kiddos. And also as teachers, we can just see all the different reports and lots of analytics and stuff. And you can really modify it for kiddos. And it's nice how it can link to Google Classroom and other places. Uh, number two, I reckon like Book It is still a huge <laughs> yeah for my kiddos. They love it so much, whether they are playing against each other um, as a class, like a live game, or whether it's like a homework sort of style where they're like battling against like random monsters and things like that. Um, Number three, probably Ed Puzzle. The the older kids are pretty into it. The youngers, I still need to establish sort of like a better routine and whatnot. But yeah, I also would love to talk about Adobe Express and how epic it is. You can just do so much with it. And I introduced it to the kids at the start of the year. So when, we, when they do reflections and stuff on assessments, they do have that as an option to use. They can use like the animate with audio um, feature from Adobe Express, which is pretty cool. And for me, I'm always using Loom uh, still to do a lot of recordings. But yeah, hopefully that works. Mel, of course it worked. Thank you for submitting that. And uh, y- you shared some uh, some great tools here: quizzes, book it, Ed Puzzle. We got another mention of Adobe Express, and of course Loom. I'm also a big fan of Loom. So Mel, thank you for contributing and sharing those five awesome tools. And now we're gonna get here to our last submission, and we're gonna finish with an email from David Sandlin. And David sent in the following. I submit Tinkercad. This can be used for designing 3D models. This year, one project I worked with the social studies teacher on was for fifth graders to design different types of Native American housing using Tinkercad. We used white filament for the 3D print and students added color with Sharpies. So Tinkercad, a 3D model designing tool. David, thank you for sending in this email. Thank you for getting connected with me earlier here in 2023. And I appreciate you and Chris and Leo and Cam and Carlos and Stacy and Brian and Katrina. And of course, Stephanie for submitting to this year's SmackDown. And that's going to do it for this year's SmackDown. So 
I hope you enjoyed everything that was shared here in the episode. I'll be back in the start of 2024, but as I said, I will also be doing a little bonus birthday episode of the podcast. Now, let's finish this episode. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the House of EdTech podcast. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe or follow the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you can continue to make the show a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. To get the most out of the House of EdTech, be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. You can find links to all of the things that were mentioned by going to chrisnessy.com slash 239. They're also a swipe or a tap away wherever you're listening to this right now. I also want to let you know that like the people who submitted their contributions, I enjoy getting feedback from listeners like you throughout the year. So please do not hesitate to reach out with questions, comments, feedback. I want to hear from you. Let's make 2024 the year that if you've been listening for any amount of time and I have no idea that you exist, please reach out to me. I want to connect. You can email me, feedback at chrisnessy.com or leave a voicemail, chrisnessy.com slash, you guessed it, voicemail. Your input, your questions, your comments, that all helps me to improve and make a better podcast. So please share your thoughts with me. I am eager to connect with you. If you know somebody who would benefit from listening to the show, I would also like to invite you to share it with them. Spreading the word on social media or through word of mouth, that would be super helpful. Your efforts help me reach a wider audience of educators who will also get value from the show. I want to thank you for helping me expand the House of Ed Tech. Finally, I'd like to invite you to become an awesome supporter. If you're getting value from this content, consider giving some value back. I am incredibly grateful for the ongoing support from the following people. Leo from Brazil, Jeff Herb, Peggy George, Dan Gallagher, Mike Messner, Matt Miller, Brian Carpenter, and Aaron Cummings. If you get value from the show and you want to become an awesome supporter as well, simply visit chrisnessy.com slash awesome. Your generosity goes a long way in helping me to continue delivering exceptional content to you and the entire community. The next episode of the show will be episode 240. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off here to start January and the new year, and I will be back with episode 240 on January 21st, 2024. Until next time, thank you for learning with me. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Thank you.